Hello, this is Dr. Sargisian, and welcome to Health Promotion, Diagnosis, and Clinical Management of Older Adults, or otherwise known as Geriatrics course. So this is one of the core courses in your nurse practitioner curriculum, and I'm hoping that you will learn a lot and will gain a lot of knowledge to apply in your practice. As I promised, we will have a small review of the syllabus this week, but instead of synchronous review, I decided to do a recording, so I won't be interrupting your busy schedule, and you can watch it at your leisure. So let's look at the syllabus, and uh, this is a regular syllabus format. You've seen it before, so you see your prerequisites and hopefully everyone completed it at this point. If you didn't have this prerequisites, let me know, which I highly doubt if someone missed this. Course is tied to DMP and master's level essential and it fulfills these requirements and corresponds to the essentials and I'd like for you to review it when you have time. These are the topics which will be related to this course and discussed in this course, but mainly this is again geriatrics and gerontology, but we'll talk about clinical aspect as well as psychosocial and policy and health delivery aspects in this course. My contact information is here. You can contact me by email, probably it's the best way. Also, you may contact me via Dudo appointment. If this is tied to my calendar, and you can make a request to make an appointment to talk if you need to do something like that, a discussion about what's happening in the course, or if you have something unclear, I will be more than happy to talk to you guys. And these are the course required readings. There are a few of them, of course, but some of them you already have some of these books. So, for instance, Butaro, it's used in your other courses. There are several, like, specific to this course, clinical geriatrics and uh, nursing care of older adults, and this will be referred throughout the course. So the one that you see in here, Kennedy Malone, in this description, in the schedule, it's referred as Malone. Please just make a note of this. Also, Mark Manual for professionals, and a couple of recommended books. The course is online completely, and it's not synchronous. It is asynchronous. We still may have a face-to-face -face meeting, and if we are having face-to-face -face meeting, and if you want to participate, have a webcam and microphone, which I know most of the laptops these days have it. So, uh, course policies are described here, and I won't be uh, taking too much of your time reading them to you. You can do it yourself. This is the most important part. It's assignment and the grading. So there is a paper and there is a discussion board and everything counts like 20% and your exams count 20%. So let's talk about review of the modules first, like it says here. And you need to log in into D2L and look at whatever is posted under each module to get credit for that module. So it's not like you can only take the exams in this course and get a grade. You have to review the posted material. Discussion board counts for 20%. There are eight discussion boards, and you will have a chance to discuss mostly psychosocial aspects and policy aspects with your peers and post it there. And the guidelines are all in the rubrics. But just to remind you, your initial post is due by Wednesday midnight, means 23.59, 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday, and your responses to your peers are on Sunday 
1159. It may be different for one or two discussion boards, but it will be outlined in your schedule and in B2L. And exams are fairly clear cut with 50 questions and we'll have three questions. I'm sorry, we'll have we'll have 50 questions. We will have three exams. Yes, just three questions. You answer and you're done. No, and we will have 50 questions for each exam. The grading policies are the same as your other courses and it's listed the grading scale is the same. Testing you will have 1.2 minutes for each question, which is the standard of American Nurses Credentialing Center. That's how much you will have for your board exams. The tests are open book, but please do not uh, go to Google searches or I don't know, Alta Vista. I think Alta Vista is gone anyway. So, but don't do Google searches. The uh, tests will be done on Respondus Locked browser. That said, you can use your books, your own notes, anything related to this course, if you have it in front of you, you can use. But basically, the reason I'm making this a locked browser because it's uh, preventing the students from using search engines. So if you think there is something needed in the exam, then please make relevant notes, you can print it, you can have it in front of you, but you cannot do any search engine searches. Okay. Open book doesn't mean that you study during the exam. Open book means you study it as any other test, but you have an idea where this information is located in the book or in your notes. Okay? And I'm saying there are several books in here. You can use all of the books to study for the same material or you can pick the book you like the most. It's not optional. Each of the book contributes, but there will be overlap in topics. So the same topics can be in both books and or, <coughs> I'm sorry, in that situation, the questions related to it should be fairly simple and it doesn't matter which of the sources you use, you should be able to be successful in studying. So let's talk about late policies. If you are missing the initial discussion board uh, posting, then it will be zero grade. But again, things happen, please let me know if there is something happening in your life. It's not like this is like rigid stringent guidelines and I won't be accepting any other exceptions for this. So just let me know if something drastic happens in your life and you need some adjustment. And student services and tech resources, everything is listed here. And this is our wonderful syllabus schedule, course schedule. As you see, everything is listed in here every week. We don't we have a discussion board this week, but we will have one next week. And I tried not to put discussion board during the exam week, so it won't be interfering with your studying and so I'm, I realize that you may study the week before, but at least on the week of the exam, you would, would not have an assignment to do a discussion board. So when you're studying for this exam, please take a look at the topics of the material. So these are the topics you will be tested on. So the questions again will be relatively generalized. If there is something specific I want you to know during the review sessions, and review sessions they may be live or recorded, but I will try to cover everything. 
what's needed, I will make a special emphasis that you need to know this. But again, you should be able to just navigate through material and find what you need. Also, there are posted presentations you can look at, you know, so they should be helpful to figure out what's going on. But again, I will have review sessions and those will be helpful if there is a very narrow, specific focus of the topic that will help you study and study the material that will be useful. At the highlight of the season and semester spring break, I'm kidding, of course, you guys don't like the spring break, you want to study and study more, but I'm kidding again. So, but you don't have anything lined up on spring break, and then we'll resume. And again, we'll be having the second exam on April 2 to 8, and then the third one will be on April 16 to 26, so you will have long time for the last exam. So your presentation guidelines are posted, and uh, to add to that, what I'd like you to do, uh, first thing, you will record voice over the PowerPoint presentation, and then you will upload it to YouTube, and then you will present that link in the D12. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the D2 L link will be posted in a special discussion board. So when you're doing this presentation, it's not only for me, it's also for your peers. So your peers can watch it and learn from you. So that said, you still need your APA format in your presentations and by APA format, I mean the references, because it will be very hard to maintain the double space in APA format in a presentation. But what I really want you to do, just have correct references listed the correct way. Okay. And if you have any questions, please contact me, and I will be available at my email or phone or you can make an appointment and we can discuss even everything face to face or doing a face to face video conference. Thank you for listening and good luck this semester. I'm looking forward to work with all of you. This is amazing time for you. You are becoming nurse practitioners and it's an amazing time for me because I really enjoy working with this cohort of students working on graduate level and this really a big learning educational experience for me. And these are not just the words because every time I was teaching a graduate course, students will bring their own experience and expertise and that makes it better for everyone. So that said, I'll close this presentation, this video, and I'll see you next.